Good evening. I trust you had a restful day. Welcome to the English News Bulletin. Let's start with the headlines. The number of people who request services on the Irembo website autonomously increased from 25% to 42% within the past six months. According to the African Center for Economic Transformation's report on the African economy, over the past two decades, Rwanda has emerged as one of the three standout countries alongside Morocco and Tunisia. Welcome to the news in details. My name is Olive Nete and let's go straight to the news. People who request services on the Irembo website without having to request assistance from other people have increased from 25% to 42% within the past six months. Follow the details on the story. The Irembo website was created to help citizens access services easily through technology. However, in different parts of the country, there are people who still get these services from entrepreneurs and even pay money for service rendered. And yet some of them have smartphones which can help them to get these services easily. Most of the times we go to Irembo requesting for a motor vehicle inspection appointment, birth certificate, marriage certificate and more. The reason why we seek these services to Irembo agents is because we do not know how to do it ourselves. I don't have a smartphone to be able to do it myself. If all Rwandans were to get smartphones, we would be able to apply for such services online by ourselves. On the other hand, those who apply for these services on their own say it has assisted them greatly since they now manage their time and also that it reduced the amount of money they used to pay to receive these services. Most of the times I request Rwanda Revenue Services through Irembo and I also request other various services that I cannot list now. There is a fee that we pay when the agents do these services for us, one we would be able to avoid if we did it ourselves. Entrepreneurs who provide these services through Irembo website say that compared to before, the number of people requesting for these services has decreased because there are people who are now doing it themselves, though there are others who still seek services from the agents. During the Kigali Scafri Day on Sunday, the city of Kigali together with the Ministry of ICT and Innovation joined the residents in sports. Through this activity, residents were reminded about the Bjikorele campaign aimed at encouraging residents to apply rainbow services on their own instead of paying money to get these services while they have smartphones to carry these services on their own. Patrick Gategawondo, the Chief Operations Officer of the Irembo website, pointed out that applying for these services is not hard. We've been running this campaign for the past five months, and we've been doing it in different, uh, uh, the countries that we're doing them in different districts. As we're speaking now, we've been having teams that came back from, I believe, the northern province uh, back to Kigali, whereby we are running this campaign countrywide. We have to do it in all the 30 districts of the country, and we are ensuring that it's not only about those living in the city, but rather for everyone uh, basically, look at Irembo as a tool that is there to break the, the digital device. It's really to, to bridge the digital device and make sure that people who are using uh, any other internet tool should be able to comfortably use the Irembo platform to apply for any other service that they need. According to the Minister of ICT and Innovation, Paula Ingabire, all over the country, there are digital ambassadors to train individuals in basic skill about technology so as to avoid obstacles that people may face when applying these services. Since all the services on Irembo are ours as residents, we need to put efforts in learning how to do it on our own. The mayor said that we have digital ambassadors all around the country. There are over 1,500 of them. Their role is to train individuals in basic skills about technology to collaborate effectively in this endeavor. As of now, Irembo offers 109 services. The campaign commenced early in May, and by that time, 25% of people by then were independently requesting services. However, this has increased to 42%, and the goal is to further raise this figure to 100%. The government of Rwanda has put efforts in establishing technological infrastructures where in some places there is free internet, especially in the city of Kigali.
Now to economic matters. According to the African Center for Economic Transformations report on the African economy over the past two decades, Rwanda has emerged as one of the three standout countries alongside Morocco and Tunisia. The countries are recognized to have endeavored to establish resilient economies that withstand challenges even during periods of global economic instabilities. We have a detailed story. Over the past 20 years, the Dukunde Kawa Cooperative with 1,193 members, started growing and exporting coffee to both the Rwandan and international markets. Annually, they export 230,400 tons, generating 3 billion Rwandan francs. According to Gilbert Muhire, the cooperative's marketing officer, enhancing the value chain has elevated the standard of living for farmers. There is a type of coffee that we all call organic coffee. We cultivate it without the use of pesticides and fertilizers. And there is also another type that is non-organic, that uses all of those products. There is also a third type that we attribute to women and is cultivated by the women of the cooperative. And a kilo of roasted coffee is 16,000 Rwandan francs. And this assists farmers in development. There is no member of the cooperative that would have trouble paying for his child's school fees, be it in secondary or even university. This is among many factories in the country that have increased the value chain of their products, which led Rwanda to be in the top three of the 30 countries where the survey was carried out. Rwanda earned the third place where it increased by 7.8 points between 2010 and 2020, from an increase of 1.6 points between 2000 and 2010. Some people say they have benefited from the country's economic development. My dream is to own my own factory. Since I started with this factory, I noticed its daily growth. My dream is to have mine as well. Yes, I will start small, but I may even reach further. In the survey conducted between 2000 and 2020 across 30 countries, including Rwanda, the report highlights Rwanda's growth in all five pillars, notably in increased production volumes. What has been done in the past 20 years is extraordinary and contributed in various ways, even though at some point from 2015 to these recent years, when people started being reluctant and putting efforts in unnecessary things that are not productive, and it heavily affected the productivity. We all know that according to what was being seen in the markets, there was not sufficient productivity to support the lives of Rwandans. But we are grateful that the institutions in charge are now making sure to boost again the performance as it was back then. According to Straton Habjarimana, an economic expert, there are some key points that Rwanda should put efforts into, aside from the five pillars that boosted the performance of the country. Another thing to highlight is that Rwanda has been uh, among the best performers uh, uh, in, in Africa, uh, the third in Africa after Morocco and Tunisia, and uh, that says a lot of things. Uh, in the last 20, 20 years, it means that Rwanda has invested a lot of uh, energy into, uh, into changing um, uh, human well-being, into changing uh, diversification of exportation, uh, into changing how economy is uh, is shaped. Maybe where we have uh, to to increase our efforts is um, in terms of uh, uh, using technology, but also in terms of increasing productivity. Fred Mugabe, the Director General of the Entrepreneurship and Industry Promotion at the Ministry of Trade and Industry points out that the country has done a lot in terms of facilitating investors in order to increase production in the country. Working closely with investors in an investment attraction into this sector, as we have seen this sector growing uh, really uh, at a very good trend, whereby uh, in 2017 we had less than 10 factories established in Rwanda, but currently uh, we saw uh, this sector growing to existing more than 70 industries working in this formal sector. So uh, we are now uh, trying to shift also to another level whereby we can also start manufacturing fabrics here in Rwanda by attracting investors, the potential investors in this sector to come based on the demand that is available here in the country so that they can also uh, go deeper to another level of uh, manufacturing fabrics. So government is providing incentives like uh, tax incentives in different uh, ways, like VAT exemption when you want to import your 
raw materials, capital equipment, machineries, and also to another level of M MBRP, manufacturing, manufacturing and beauty recover program, which also further gives uh, more in incentives about uh, tax exemptions on construction materials so that the investors can feel a little bit facilitated so that they can be encouraged to come and establish factories here in Rwanda. The report ranks Rwanda third following Morocco with a 17.6 point increase and Tunisia with a 16 point increase between 2000 and 2020. Mozambique, Niger and Burundi occupy the bottom three positions in the ranking. In other news, the Secretariat of the East African Community and various members of the East African Community Legislative Assem Assembly, EALA, point out that member countries of the EAC need to increase the budget allocated to the health sector, and this is in order to help the countries in harmonization of health data services. Adam Squizera files the report. Regional Center for Digital Health. As well as the Secretariat of the East African Community points out that what the region needs, in particular, is to streamline the health information, which is emphasized to be associated with the adoption of building the capacity of the personnel in this sector. Fatou Mandanjiza affirms that even though the COVID-19 pandemic has left a lot of damage, but there are lessons that it brought, such as the fact that countries in the region can harmonize health data services. <laughs> Even if it wasn't easy, but here I think that if we achieve this of health data governance, there will be the harmonization of the data within member states and this will facilitate in information sharing. However, members of the East African Community Legislative Assembly, EALA, find that making this possible, it requires EAC member states to also increase the budget allocated in the health sector and this should be harmonized with the policies related to the sector of health. The Pan-African Health Informatics Association, HARENA, urges the countries on this continent to participate in the adoption of policies and to put broad guidelines for those working in these health services to access information. If managed properly and if used properly, can help address uh, health challenges like the ones you've mentioned, um, has been shown to to require certain things to be addressed properly, and those are called uh, the enabling environment and there are about seven of them. You know, so this consultative forum is specifically working on one of those enabling environments or pillars called uh, legislation, policy, um, and regulations. This consultative meeting have also deliberated on EAC regional and continental health data governance initiatives and digital health agenda and how to leverage digital data for universal health care. It was convened by the EAC Secretariat in conjunction with the East African Legislative Assembly, IALA. Adam Squizera, RTV News. In more news, economic experts as well as citizens are of the view that a durable solution should be made for idle state-owned buildings in order to minimize loss. The management of the Rwanda Housing Authority says that a thousand such buildings have been listed. Serge Nore with the details. The idle buildings constructed in different parts of the country were once home to various government institutions. Residents of Huye District say there are many idle buildings in the area that should be used instead of constructing others. It is a big loss. These buildings were constructed with demand, but it seems like they are not needed anymore. But I think they can be used for other things. Nothing has changed so far. I don't even know if there are people living there. I know those buildings since I was very young. They should be renovated and used because no one can enter in such a building. The 2022-2023 Auditor General's report indicated that of the 49,337 state-owned buildings assessed, over 950 were dormant and in a state of disrepair. The report also indicated that there are 61 dormant buildings in the city of Kigali, 301 in the southern province, 252 in the western province, 245 in the northern province, and 181 in the eastern province, noting that it represents a great loss to the country. The government put in place measures to give idle buildings to private owners. Relevant institutions should follow it up and solve the issue. People consume drugs in those buildings, 
and thieves make them their home. Bashora kuza bakaba babigira nk'indiri yabo. Economic analysts say the government should make the issue a priority. Cyane ko nayo ngayo The government has a task of determining how these buildings should be put to use. Decisions should be made with the consultation of engineers because idle assets cause losses. The Rwanda Housing Authority has noted that the fact that idle buildings have been listed gives hope that a proper decision will be made in the near future. We found buildings that are still intact and can be used. Others have some damage and can be repaired, while there are those that are in such bad condition that they should be demolished. We are working with district authorities to speed up the process of putting those buildings to use. Economic observers say that renovating idle buildings and using them as government offices should reduce the cost of rent for the government that currently stands at 12 billion Rwandan francs annually. This story was translated by Sam Kalisa and read to you by Serge Nore for Rwanda Television News. Thank you, Serge. Still speaking about local news, parents in Murera district of the northern province are happy about the fact that educative programs that use technology such as television as a means of transmission have been helping their children to improve their academic performance. The company known as Ubongo is responsible for preparing such programs for kids that are both entertaining and educative. The organization has spent the past week in Wurera urging parents to help their children to watch such programs that are prepared for children between the ages of 3 and 14, airing on Rwanda Television, BTN and Pachis TV. They are also available on Ubongo's YouTube channel on the website toolkids.ubongo.org. Many thanks for being with us today. I'm Olive Nete. Until next time, stay safe and goodbye. Have a productive week.